welcome to another weekly devotional. Uh, today we're going to be in 1 John chapter 3. And so in 1 John chapter 3, we're going to look at the first couple of paragraphs. We're going to start in verse 1, and uh, we will go through, oh, verse 10. And uh, as we do that, we're going to be reading through the New Living Translation. And I want to illustrate a couple of um, a couple of important things for for understanding the Bible and um, and how to read it and interpret it. And so uh, it'll be something you can hear on audio and see on the screen. So either way will work. Um, so I should remind you at this point. So you can uh, you can listen to this online, uh, online. Of course you can. You're watching this online. You can listen to this in a podcast form uh, by going to the Apple. Uh, store or Spotify and just looking for Greenwood Baptist Church weekly devotional. Um, obviously, if you're listening to it there, you could also view this on YouTube or Facebook. So just letting you know about that. Um, but now let's dive into First John chapter 3. See how very much our Father loves us, for he calls us his children, and that is what we are. But the people who belong to this world don't recognize that we are God's children because they don't know him. Dear friends, we are already God's children, but he has not shown us what we will be like when Christ appears. But we do know that we will be like him, for we will see him as he really is. And all who have this eager expectation will keep themselves pure just as he is pure. Everyone who sins is breaking God's law, for all sin is contrary to the law of God. And you know that Jesus came to take away our sins, and there is no sin in him. Anyone who continues to live in him will not sin, but anyone who keeps on sinning does not know him or understand who he is. Dear children, don't let anyone deceive you about this. When people do what is right, it shows that they are righteous, even as Christ is righteous. But when people keep on sinning, it shows that they belong to the devil, who has been sinning since the beginning. But the Son of God came to destroy the works of the devil. Those who have been born into God's family do not make a practice of sinning because God's life is in them. So they can't keep on sinning because they are children of God. So now we can tell who are children of God and who are children of the devil. Anyone who does not live righteously and does not love other believers does not belong to God. It's kind of a long section. I understand that. Uh, and so I just want to talk about a couple of things to begin. Uh, we are still contrasting two groups of people. There are uh, those who are a part of the, 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 the second person group that uh, John is writing about here when he says, us, we, uh, dear friends, um, God's children, those kinds of things, is referring to uh, him and the group of believers that he's writing to. Then he talks about the other group, which we talked about last time. This is the part of uh, the world that does not believe in God. This is the group of people who are against the church. And as he talks about here, they may even be attending at the church, but they're not living um, to show uh, what's on the inside. And we'll come back to that more in a moment. So that's the two groups of people. Uh, the, the, the thing I wanted to show you about understanding Scripture this week is that we need to let Scripture interpret Scripture. There are a couple of um, possibly confusing times uh, in this passage which um, make it to where you might think it means one thing when really if you take the whole Bible into account, you're pretty sure that it means something different. Okay? And so one of the areas is in 1 John chapter 3, 4 through 6. Uh, we, we hear about how if a person claims that they know God and they don't obey his commands, that that person's a liar, they're not living the truth. And then it says, if you do obey God's commands, you show how you love him. So those that l say they love God and they live in God should live as Jesus did. In other words, they, sh they shouldn't have sin. Now, that makes it sound like um, the way that you know you're a believer is you never sin. But if you look up above in the, the earlier chapter, in chapter 2, you'll actually see um, something a little different. It says, My dear children, 
I'm writing this to you so that you will not sin, but if anyone does sin, we have an advocate who pleads our case before the Father. And so from that, we can know that John understands believers are still going to sin. There's an allowance he's made for that earlier where he says that, you know, we appeal to Jesus. Jesus can intercede and, and has already paid for our sins. And so the idea here is that we are stopping habits of sinning. We are stopping habits of sinning. So that's the first thing, um, that believers need to stop habits of sinning. Um, that's the main takeaway from, from this passage here. And so you and I are not going to live perfectly, but that we should do our very best to eliminate habits of sin. So maybe uh, we have a habit of just extreme anger when, uh, when things happen in our life. Well, um, we're told in the Bible that uh, we're not supposed to be around angry people. We're not supposed to um, be, uh, be angry and, and sin. It says, in your anger, don't sin. And so maybe that's something that is a pattern in your life that leads to a lot of sinful behavior. Maybe it's uh, substances, drugs, alcohol, something that, that you use to um, change your mindset. Well, again, the Bible tells us that we're supposed to be filled with the Spirit instead of these things and be sober-minded. And so eliminating those habits from your life, doing something, maybe it's putting up guardrails so that you, you keep from getting too angry or that you keep from getting into places where those substances are going to be a problem. That is how you're going to eliminate those sinful habits. It uh, doesn't mean you're going to be perfect, but you're going to eliminate those sinful habits. So sticking with that principle of letting Scripture interpret Scripture, uh, we're going to look down in uh, verses 7 through 10, talks about how um, especially in verse 9, those who have been born into God's family do not make a practice of sinning because God's life is in them. They can't keep on sinning because they are children of God. So now we can tell who are children of God and who are children of the devil. In other words, look at the fruit of their life. Um, Jesus put it this way uh, in Matthew chapter 12, 34, he said, you brood of snakes, how can evil men like you speak what is good and right? For whatever is in your heart determines what you say. He talks about in, in other places that out of the heart uh, overflows um, what, what is good. Um, and, and whatever you have inside of you is going to come out in your actions. And so you and I are not God. Um, we don't know what's inside a person. But we do know, and, and John tells us, that we can look at uh, what's going on in a person's life. What are they producing in a person's life? So the second thing we can take away is that you and I as believers can look at the fruit of a person's life. We can determine whether they are in line with God or whether they in line with the devil. And when we look at that, uh, that's actually not a uh, full picture of it because we don't know the heart. Maybe they're struggling with something and, uh, and it just looks like they're a child of the devil. In other words, their, their behavior is not lining up with Scripture. Well, in that case, uh, what we should do is, either way, we don't know what's on the, in the inside. So when we talk to somebody about this, if they're telling us they're a believer, we can say, hey, look, Scripture says this on the one hand. Uh, it also says that in First John that we can tell by someone's behavior, are they following God's laws? And if they're not, then they're not a believer. And so we say, you know, what, what's going on here? We ask them the question. We're pointing at Scripture. We're letting the Holy Spirit convict them at that point. And so uh, what you want to stay away from is by saying, well, that person's obviously a child of the devil, blah, 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 blah. You don't know what's on the inside of their heart. Um, you don't know what God is going to do in their life in the future. Um, but you can tell what's going on and how you need to address them and treat them in that moment. And so um, that's something that we can do as believers, although we don't, we don't have final authority on that. So um, what we ought to do when we see someone who's like that is to avoid taking part in what they're doing. And then on the flip side of that, uh, whenever we have a chance to share the good news of Christ with them, um, we should point them to Jesus because Jesus is the Savior, not you and I. And so uh, that's what we can do there. So I hope that, uh, that this has been helpful. I hope you've uh, taken away from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 to 10, that you can um, 
stop those sinful habits. That, that's one of the things that we can do and that we can be fruit inspectors, that we can look at the lives of other people and, uh, and then treat them according to the fruit of their life. So I hope that that helps you uh, this week. And we hope to see you again soon, whether that's uh, in person on Sunday, uh, right here in the church, uh, three worship services on Sunday morning. Find out more at greenwood.church. Or maybe you want to join us again online, uh, 945 on our Facebook or YouTube page. Just look at Greenwood Baptist Church in Weatherford, Texas. And again, we would love to see you and connect with you.